Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video and today I'm going to show you guys the top seven applications that has been formatted for the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Now one of them is built with inside of the phone that you might not know about. The other ones are located inside of the Play Store and one of them is inside of the Galaxy Essentials widget. So the first one I want to talk about is called Finger Gestures and it's located inside of the Play Store. So go to your Play Store, go to the very top and then type in Finger Gestures. When you have that typed in, it's going to be this third one that is down. If yours is not third one, it is the one that has the purple icon with the little fingerprint logo there. And then when that is downloaded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over and this is where I have the application. So we're going to open this up and you first want to enable the fingerprint gestures. So and essentially what this application is for, it's a way that you'd be able to use the fingerprint reader that's on the back of the phone for different shortcuts. And you can set up all the way up to three different gestures. There's a single tap, a double tap, and then the fast tap. Now, when you scroll on down, you also have a little demo mode if you want to check some stuff out. You have your profile if you like to set it up. You also can enable it to where for the single tap, it only works with your fingerprint, which is kind of cool. Um, you can set up the delay for the double tap. And then you can also check out, you know, a couple of the other options down here. But I will be honest, I didn't make any changes. The only things I went to was I went over into gestures and for my single tap, I just kind of scrolled through. I wanted to see what options and opportunities I had and I wanted to turn on the torch so it's going to turn on the flashlight on the back of the phone. Double tap is going to open up a application that I have set up uh, which is YouTube and then the fast tap which is either swipe down, it will open up my recent applications. Now, before we go into everything, I do want to make sure that even though you have this thing enabled, go to the very top of your phone, pull on the notifications panel, click on settings. You're going to scroll down to where it says accessibility. Anytime you have a application like this, you want to go down to where it says services and turn on that application. So it is a application for services. Basically what this is doing is that there, you need the accessibility of using the fingerprint to open up applications because maybe you lost a thumb um, or maybe your hands are just smaller and it's harder to hit buttons or it's just a little bit harder for you to maybe see some of the options of turning on settings. So it's a accessibility feature that you're able to do. Let's say we go into the back of the phone and I go into that little tap. Um, you're gonna see that it is turning on my flashlight and then you just do one more tap and it turns it off. Now, if you do go in there extremely fast, you know, it might not pick it up. Um, so you just want to kind of go in there almost as if it's like a little button. So it's kind of like I'm pressing it as if it was a button for it to react. Now, if I was to go in the back and double tap the fingerprint reader, then it would open up the YouTube application and then swiping down will open up my recent application. So I'm going to swipe down now. And you can see that it pulled it up. So that's the accessibility is that if your finger is right next to the fingerprint reader, you'd be able to do a tap, a double tap, or swipe down to do three different actions. Make sure you guys hit that like button if at any point in time in this video you guys like something or go below the video, click on subscribe if you learn something new and you like the style of these videos. Now the next one I'm gonna talk about is actually a game that is on the Play Store. So there's not too many games that you know operates with the S Pen, but this one is one of those that's pretty fun. And the moment you start playing the game, you will actually start to like it as well too. And you're super accurate with the S Pen versus if you're able to use your finger. Now, if this right here is something that you're wondering or questioning what it is, this is the Studler Digital Pen. If this is something you're interested in, go below the video. There will be a link for this product, but I'll also have another link that'll link you up with all of the products that I suggest and also everything I use on my YouTube channel if you guys are interested. So what you're gonna wanna do is go over into the Play Store and you're gonna search for Score Hero. Um, or you can just type in the word score and more than likely it's going to be somewhere close to the very top and it is a soccer game It's actually pretty fun. So I'm gonna go inside of my game launcher here Let's go to score hero and so for this game You can log it in with your gmail, which I always do it with my gmail You can also link it up with your facebook so that you can see other people along the line So you can see it's kind of similar to some of the other games where you're going through the little line seeing you know how many of your friends and where they're located at and so i'm going to go through here and hit on play there's a lot of cool audio with this but i have it on mute just for the purpose of this video and so here this is actually me and then i also got my yellow guys uh, and so what you're going to want to do is try to get it over to your men and then you're going to go over in there and score a goal now, when you do get it over to your guy, then you're able to pretty much push it in any direction. Now, I do want to mention that that one right there, I pushed it pretty far. Um, you also have a little bit of monies on the very top that you're able to rewind. So if you messed it up, you'd be able to do it that way too. Now, let's say that I want to just bring it right on over to him. Uh, that's how you're able to do it. You can also move this around. There's also a little bit of a demo period that kind of you know allows you to do a little trial. So you can kind of see how to play the game. But this is actually pretty fun. And so he's going to go up just a little bit closer. Let's see, I'm going to bring it up 
up over to him and let's see if I can go to goal. Now I do want to mention that when you do try to go for a goal, you want to put it towards the bottom because if you try to go pretty far, um, you're not really hitting it harder. You just want to, you know, place it where you want it to go. So I was able to smash through it and you can see he's doing a little bit of a dance. Now there's a little bit more gameplay that's going on, but here's the thing. You might go through a whole bunch of different segments. You might be going through so many different movements and levels you think, but if you're to mess up, it's going to take you all the way back if you do not hit the rewind button. So this is a pretty fun game. You also might get addicted to it and try to get as far as you can. Um, but outside of that, it's a super fun game and you get more accurate with a S pen than just using your finger. Now this next one is called write on PDF. Now this is going to be super helpful if you have any type of homework or if you do real estate or maybe you're buying a house, selling a house, maybe you have some type of banking documents or something and you have to write it out, you know, maybe do a little signature and a date, um, fill in some stuff, maybe something for school. Um, but you don't want to go home, print it off, sign it. And then once you sign it, now you have to scan it and then re email it back in. It just takes way too much time. Um, so you will have an option right here where it's called write on PDF. When you open up the application, it's going to show you all of the different PDFs that is on the phone. Now, if it's Excel or word, it won't show up on write on PDF because obviously it is not a PDF. Now, another way you can find it too is let's say that we go over into the Samsung folder and then you go to my files. Within my files, you go to internal storage. Now inside of here, this is where you're also gonna see that option. And so when you find the option for write on PDF, this is another place you'll be able to find everything that you have that you're able to kind of you know write on. So as example, let's say we go on to write on PDF. I'm gonna go into this organic chemistry. And I don't really need to open it up in a certain area. So I'm going to keep it on page 42, but you can kind of go through everything. And so let's say that you're inside of here. And for some reason you need to, you know, get this thing circled. So this is pretty much the organic chemistry, you know, book that you would normally get, you know, for college and everything else too. Um, and so this is a way that you'd be able to make notes. Um, you'd also be able to go inside of here and let's say you want to go over into highlighter, then you can choose your highlighter. Let's make it yellow. And then you'd be able to highlight certain areas as well too. So it's super helpful if you're using it for school, if you're using it for college, uh, maybe you just want to have, you know, if, if people send you PDFs, you want to make notes on something, you'd be able to do it that way. Um, or especially if you're doing real estate or really anything else where you have to sign something, it's super easy. You write on it, you save it, and then you send it back. No need to go to a computer or a printer or a fax. And now the next one's pretty fun. This one's called Navbar Apps. And to find Navbar Apps, you just want to go over into the Play Store. And on the very top, just type in Navbar. And then you'd be able to hit install and then you'd be able to open it. Now, just like from before, you want to turn this thing on and then enable it. And then the other thing you want to do too is you want to go over into your accessibility uh, and then you go to the very bottom and you turn on the Navbar apps. Now, the cool thing about this one was that it prompted me to go into the accessibility. Now, if it does not do that, all you have to do is go to the very top, hit on settings. You're going to scroll down to where it says accessibility. And then you go down and that's where it has the nav bar apps and you turn it on. So it's a way that it's always able to work. Now, if you've seen just now, um, it kind of went away. So it's kind of a blackish color. If I was to go inside of my settings, you're going to see how it turns this little gray color. Uh, let's say that we were to go over into YouTube. Um, it's going to turn into the red color. And then let's say we go over into nav bar. You can see that it's turning the same color. So it's a way that it's changing your navigation bar to the color of the application you go into, which is pretty fun and awesome. Um, you also have a different option if you want to choose it if for your own palette. So if you want to have your own option of a color, let's say you want it to be always green, it's a way you're able to do it. And then some of the options below. Below, you can check out the show battery percentage. So my battery is only this far. So it's a little bit more than uh, 50%. And so if you don't want to see it, you know, looking like that, um, then you are able to, you know, either put on the top, bottom or middle. But because it doesn't really change for you guys, it's because of the size. So if you want to put it through the middle, if you want it on the bottom, really what I would do is I would make it all the way. That's the way that it kind of looks pretty cool. Um, you can also change the color. So if you don't want it to be green, you can change it to a different color. But I reference the color green of how much charge I have in my phone. So it's a cool way that you also be able to show your battery life without showing it on the very top. Now, if you don't want that, you can turn it off and you just click on the little checkbox. You can also put a image on the very bottom. And then this one's pretty fun too. Most people might do this. This is the emojis. So now I have emojis on the very bottom um, and you just go into the settings. You can go inside of there. Um, and so that one's the pile of poo. Um, you just go through here, you know, choose which ones you would like to have on the very bottom. Um, this one is only showing the popular ones. So if you want to see everything, then you'd be able to do that. But, you know, we'll, we might as well just keep it on the popular just so you guys can see. Um, I also have mine spaced out. So how you can do that 
is here is an example of what it's going to look like on the very top. So if I was to put my spaces, well, originally when you first open it up, it might be like this. Um, so what I did was I wanted to put it almost evenly spaced in between all my different um, icons on the very bottom. So I'm going to put it right around there. You can also change the size of the emojis as well. So now let's say that you don't really want to have the color there. This is what's pretty fun. This right here is only for changing of the color. So if you don't want to have the color in the very bottom, just do that but you can keep your emojis on. And so now you're always going to have emojis on the very bottom of your screen, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so you can go to really into any application and always have them on the very bottom. So, and then when you scroll down, you're going to see a section that says features in testing. And so this one right here is putting the music equalizer inside of the navigation bar and then soon available coming up, it's going to have talking about a overlay. So it would be able to put a overlay on the screen, but let's talk about the one for the music equalizer. So it'll look like this on the very top. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can keep it. You can either keep it small, you can have as medium or big. So for me, I like mine set up as big. And then over here, you can check out your style. If you want the top style, middle or the bottom, I like mine right here on the very bottom again. And then what you can use is the, use the color from the active application. So this one changes all the time. For me, um, this, I want it to kind of stay the same throughout any time I'm listening to music. And so I chose my primary color of yellow um, and you could change, you know, the color of it and such. Um, I used to have it over as green, but there's a few applications that's green. There's less applications that's yellow, unless if you use Snapchat a lot, then you might want to switch it over to green. So let's give this a test. We're going to go inside of YouTube and on the very bottom, you can see it's red because red is the color of YouTube. And when I was hit the, on the play button, you can see here how it's scrolling up and down, pretty much doing the equalizer everywhere. And then now let's move over into the music application. This is one that I downloaded off the Galaxy App Store. This is the Samsung Music application. And when I was to hit the play button, you can see down here that it's blue with the green equalizer on the very bottom. So it's pretty fun when you test out different applications with it as well. Also, if you're still listening to music and you get out of the application, it's gonna make it play. Um, and my background down here is gonna be black because it's you know set up like the same color as my background of the phone. So you can see that it's going to stand out pretty well because it does have a bat black background and then the green equalizer. I think this one's kind of fun. I showed it off in public the other day and some people asked me what the heck was going on and I was able to show it to them and they thought it was pretty sweet and I wanted to throw it up inside of this video. So that was the nav bar apps. And I do want to mention too, if at any time that you turn these off, so the fingerprint gestures or the nav bar apps, make sure you guys go underneath your settings, go to accessibility. And when you do have them off, just go inside of here and turn this off as well. Now the next one will be S note. Now S note was a beloved application that used to be referenced as the Samsung notes on some of the older phones. Now S note, if you'd like to find it, just go inside of your galaxy essentials widget. If you don't have that widget, just make sure you press and hold on the screen. Go to the very bottom where it says widgets and then search for Galaxy Essentials and add it to your home screen because these are the applications that are made for this Samsung Galaxy device. On the very top, just go inside of there and search for S Note and then that is how you'd be able to download it. So let's go over into S Note and then inside of here, you can see several different things you'd be able to do. So you can do a voice one, a text, or you'd also be able to write. Now this one has a, a couple different features that the Samsung Notes does not. Now Samsung Notes does have it a little bit more organized, I believe, um, versus this one here. So this one is just kind of, you know, a few different pages um, that you're able to draw things, but the other one kind of goes in a continuous line. Um, this one over here is kind of fun. This is a shape recognition tool so you can see i'm not really that good at drawing but it's able to make a perfect you know circle and square and everything else for me so if you're doing a little bit of drawing this is where you'd be able to kind of match what you're trying to do and get everything drawn the way it's supposed to look like and I'm not going to go far in depth with S Note. If you do want to see a video similar to this one, do you be able to check out my uh, buddy's channel? His name is Brett, and he has a channel called Tech with Brett. He has a full tutorial on the S Note, which would pretty much cover everything that I would cover. So I'm just going to direct you over to that, and I'll also put his video link below the video inside this description. Now the next one is a application you can get off the Play Store. This one's also completely free. So you just want to search for Appy geek so it's almost as if you're typing in happy geek um, but it's just appy geek and you go in there you go to install and then you open it up now this is a application that i read every single day a lot of people go to cnet or engadget um, pretty much any you know website or application but this one actually puts all of them into one spot and all of these little tiles here are kind of live which is pretty fun so i cut my top stories the all news photos 
Apple videos community and then Samsung. So if I wanted to read anything about Samsung, I just go inside of here and I'm, and I'm able to read it. Now this one you can see um, is gonna come from Android Central. Here's Techno Buffalo. Here's the Android Police. This one's from CNET. And you can also notice when they get uploaded and shown. So these, these ones right here were from six hours ago. This one was five hours ago, um, four hours ago. And a lot of times, um, right now, I mean, it's a Saturday night, so a lot, not a lot of things is going on right now. Uh, maybe let's say we go over into the all news. Underneath all news, you're able to see a whole bunch of different options too. This one was updated here 21 minutes ago. Um, this one was put here 45 minutes ago. Um, and a lot of times you're gonna notice it's gonna update right in front of you. And some of these might say even one minute ago. So all of these sources come from so many different areas. Now, if you wanna have a different category, just go to the plus icon. You can go underneath the featured and you can choose in if you wanna have stuff about science. Um, so I'm just gonna do on the plus icon there too. Um, let's say we go to hot topics. We can check out hot topics. We can do printer, um, but I'm gonna show you how you can delete these as well too. You have tech companies. Uh, I mean, there's so many things in here. Now, the other thing I wanna show that's pretty important is when you hit on this plus icon and it's as if you're gonna add in another little topic. On the very top right-hand side, you have this little icon. This is gonna show all the content providers. So when you go through this entire list, this is pretty extensive. Um, it's not like you're just looking at one little company or one little blog. You're going to see that there's a ton. So even if I open up tech news, there's going to be a bunch more there. Let's say I go to geek culture, there's going to be a bunch more there. Um, so it's actually pretty fun. And then if you go through here and you see a couple of them that you don't want to see pop up, just hit on that little check box and then you're not going to see those um, as a content provider. So now that we added just a couple new categories, if you would like to change the size of these, you can see this one's a big little square. This one's a little rectangle. If you were to press and hold on that, this is where you'd be able to choose how large or how small you like to have it. The other thing is, is that if you're to press and hold, there's also gonna be a little trash bin that is there. So I don't really need the science one there. I'm gonna to go to delete as well. So it's a way that you'd be able to move these anywhere and everywhere you would like. So this is a fast and easy way of learning everything that's happening inside of the business of pretty much tech and almost anything else as well too. So I highly suggest this is this one if you're into all the different, you know, latest information about what is happening. And now the very last one is gonna be one that I've already covered and that's why I placed it as last, but it is one that's pretty fun and cool and it's called Note Buddy. Now Note Buddy is a way that once you enable it, again, you wanna go inside your settings, go to accessibility and turn it on, but it's a way that you can change the sound of your S Pen. So you have the detachment sound and insertion sound. So now that I have a sound for the detachment sound, I'm gonna push on this and detach it. And you can see that it was the cool saber. And then for the insertion sound, I did a Mario sound and it was him going down the pipe. So it's a fun way of changing the sound of your S Pen insertion and detachment um, just through a free application called Note Buddy. And again, that's just on the Play Store. So that was the top seven applications you'd be able to use in the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, ranging anywhere from using the fingerprint reader to changing the sounds of your S Pen to a awesome soccer game from the Play Store. So make sure you guys hit that like button if at any point in time you guys have liked something inside this video and also go below the video, click on subscribe or click on subscribe right over here if there's something that's brand new that you guys have never seen before and you guys also like the style of these videos and i'll see you guys later